All right, this is my NBA rankings for 2019-2020 season. I start with my Eastern Conference. Number one, I've got to go with Milwaukee Bucks. You take Kawhi Leonard, Danny Green off the Raptors. I still have them ranked high. You'll see when I get to them on my list. But Milwaukee, to me, is the cream of the East. They might be the cream of the NBA. They are true title contenders. Anytime you got Giannis at 10 to Kumbo leading the way, that, that's all good. Key MVP should be in the running for another MVP award this year. Consistently puts up big numbers, big points, big rebounds. If, if he could add a jump stop, he would be the most unstoppable player in the NBA, in my opinion. I think you're talking Michael Jordan type. If he could ever get a jump shot going, maybe even establish, I don't even give a fuck about it three, but if he could knock down three or establish a consistent jumper, watch out. Bucks, great team. Great team. Lost Malcolm Brogdon, of course. But you still got Chris Middleton. You still got Eric Bled. So Milwaukee will be fine. They're the only 61 team in the NBA, if I remember correctly, last year. I expect them to probably do the same as they did in repeat number one in the East. Philadelphia 76ers. I have them ranked number two. A lot of this depends on health and whether Simmons can actually take a shot outside of eight feet from the basket basically within his two steps and dunk or two steps and lay it in. Dude just is scared to shoot or something. And Joel Embiid's health is the critical, critical key for the 76ers. If Embiid stays healthy, they've got not only the biggest lineup, but they probably got the best defensive lineup in the NBA. They're, they all have length. They all are willing to play defense. The question more with the Sixers is, do they have enough three-point shooting, especially with the loss of J.J. Redick? And... Will they be able to stay healthy? Um, number three, that's where I have the Toronto Raptors. I think they're a tier down from Philly and Milwaukee, but I still think they can compete, and they still could win the Eastern Conference. They've got consistency. They Sure, they lost their best player, and I'm not saying they're as good a team without Kawhi as they would be with, but I still think they're a better team than they were before Kawhi, when they had Damar and Lowry and Pirtle, et cetera, leading the way in Toronto. I think they're somewhere in between the championship team last year and the team they had before. And Masai Ujiri, there's no manager I like better, probably no GM or president that I, I like better in maybe all of sports than Ujiri. Um, he is top notch. They got Siakam, Lowry, Ibaka, Gasol. You still got OG Ananobi. The kid's phenomenal. He's like a a smaller version of Siakam with more athleticism. Uh, kid can shoot the three, he can play D, he can block shots. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal player. Freddie Van Fleet, another great piece that the Raptors have. They got a good mixture of young and old, so either way this season goes, they can add and still be all right for the future and the now, or they can subtract with some contracts that are either expiring or only a year left or so with the Gasols, the Ibakas, the Lowrys, etc., the Vets. But still, this is a top team in the Eastern Conference. And I think really only the next two teams can compete with the Raptors for home court advantage. And it gets me to my fourth and fifth picks. I can't decide which order to put these two. I'm going to put Boston first. Um, addition by subtraction. I love the addition of Kemba Walker. And the addition by subtraction, of course, is Kyrie Irving. I'm not sold on Kyrie Irving. I think he's a bigger locker room disturbance than anybody thinks and realizes Kevin Durant is out there with them in Brooklyn and won't be playing this year. So that'll be interesting. And that's why Brooklyn you won't hear till later on in my list. So the Celtics, I think they're a strong team. Jalen Brown, they extended. Jason Tatum, they still got. Gordon Hayward without Horford there. See, see how Hayward does with a less crowded front court there in Boston. So I have them ranked fourth. Just basically Toronto, Boston, Indiana could fight. This could be a five-team race in the East. Indiana Pacers... Victor Oladipo, once he returns, I really like that. The addition of Malcolm Brogdon. Wow, Indiana doing great things. Jeremy Lamb, three-point shooters. Uh, Justin Holiday, Doug McDermott, Miles Turner, and Damana Sabonis bring you a little of that grit, that, a little of that fucking old-school toughness that you like, the, the old-style basketball sort of never back down, never shy away. They play hard, they defend hard, they represent their coach, Nate McMillan, in such a good way. Indiana comes in at five for me in the East. Miami Heat, Detroit Pistons, Orlando Magic, Brooklyn Nets. These four teams will battle for the final three playoff spots in the East, I, I feel. And you can flip a coin for whoever you want. I know 
Miami out of Jimmy Butler. He brings him just a true competitor. Uh, does his behavior off the court counter his production on the court? Well, that's debatable. His last two stops have proven that they wanted to get rid of him and weren't too weren't too they, they were quick to show him the door let's say so we'll see how he does in Miami Spolstra down there you never know uh, none rookie of the year candidate kids doing well he leads all rookies and win shares point four the next close to point two and he's tied for the VORP which is uh value of replacement player I believe if I remember correctly there's a bunch of them tied at point one really insignificant in, in the VORP but he does lead all rookies and win shares early on after three games, four games for some teams. Well, you got Haslam, you got Dragic. So Miami will be battling with Detroit. Detroit's relying on health. Uh, Blake Griffin's health is a big question mark. So if they can get healthy, they they will probably be a, a real playoff contender and probably even a, a team that people won't want to face in, in the playoffs. As is the next team, the Orlando Magic playoffs last year I expect them to take another couple strides and compete this year Brooklyn Nets uh, if Durant was healthy obviously they'd be ranked a lot higher but I expect him to miss the entire season and I'm not a Kyrie Irving believer never have been I think he is what he is with his flat earth and everything else everything's a joke to him then I have the New York Knicks New York Knicks, R.J. Barrett, Canadian kid. Good to see all the Canadians in the NBA. I believe there's, what, 20 of them, approximately 20 of them in the NBA this year. Uh, so that that is always nice to see. Canada basketball needs a good showing, needs a lot of these 20 to come out and participate and help all these young kids that keep on showing up for Canada. Very disappointed in some of these NBA players. Those used with injuries, I understand. I get that. I, that's not on you. Or there could be some extenuating extenuating circumstances that prevent others so the Knicks I have just outside of the playoffs Washington Wizards Chicago Bulls Atlanta Hawks Charlotte Hornets Cleveland Cavaliers Charlotte and Cleveland I expect at the bottom the basement feeders and that is my Eastern Conference lineup